Hello then, my good friends of YouTube. <sighs> I've been talking to a good fellow subscriber and was talking about the removal of flybacks. This is a flyback transformer to somebody who doesn't know what one is. This is out of a CRT TV. And uh, what was talking about a friend of mine who's uh, also on uh, Google Plus, um, who follows, we follow each other and looking at uh, stuff we upload and talk to talk to each other from day to, from day. To day. And uh, was talking about these flybacks and removing the best way to remove them. And I said I would do a video to show how I remove them and you know and how quickly I can remove these flybacks out of uh, one of these boards, like so. This one was exactly the same. This is that video I did with the arcing of the monitor. Excuse me. And uh, I've removed all the components I need off this. Oh, just, I've missed that and I've missed that. I've missed that, <laughs> but anyway, um, so I said I'd do a video to show the way I remove components as well, how quickly I can remove components as well as the flyback, and uh, so here's the video, and I shall show you what I do. First I've removed the, the heat sink just on the, off the side here, which was three uh, little screwing bolts, screwing nuts, so sorry, just like that, for each one. And it was just one little bit of a solder on the bottom of here just to remove one of these heat sinks, if you can see that. One of these. And uh, then what you do, because when you grow old of this thing, you don't want to be bending over components. Use an old pair or an old rag. Just to clean all the gunk off the uh, transistors. So, and then, because all I use is either short nose, long nose pliers, or just a normal pair of lock pliers, and a screwdriver, and a pair of snips in case you need them for anything. And uh, that's all I use because I don't use solder suckers. Um, I find them quite annoying because they constantly tend to block up. And if you want something done quickly, and you, you know, you just want it, want to open and get it done, solder suckers are not normally the best option in my case, but some people may argue that, but I don't like to use them. So first off trying to remove these little transistors, there's three leg one here, it's soldering on between all three legs and out it comes. This is a two leg, so this is a, it'll be a diode, out it comes, larger one, in between the two legs, oops, to the one side, and out it comes, just straighten that up with a little bit of pliers. Don't go and burn yourself like I did the other day, quite painful. This little uh, capacitor, out it comes. Another larger capacitor next to it. These are foil wrapped, these are. A uh, little bit of a transformer here, just heat one leg up, pushing down on the transformer. And to the side, get the other side and out it comes. Resistors are quite easy as well. Just grab all the resistor not to touch the legs because they will get hot quite quickly and burn yourself. So you pull on the leg. Oop, that one's a bit... can't get into that one very well. So you just get your pair of long nose, grab hold of the leg that you're soldering, and heat one up and out it comes. Uh, say a large inductor here, whichever one you're heating up, push against, so that's one leg out, and then the next one pulling up, and out it comes. Uh, something with a heat sink on, uh, you normally take the bolt out first, and then uh, you can remove the heat sink quite easily by doing the same way. If basically, if you, I mean, if it's got a transistor in it, you normally um, and you can't get to the bolt because it's probably situated behind something, which is, and you need to get to remove this quite quickly. You just heat up the the pins like that, pull it back so it pulls them out of the board, and then heat that one and like that, and out it comes. Quite simple. Some might say it's a bit of a rush bodge job of way of doing it, but uh, then the day you just taking parts out of the board, you're not repairing it in any way. Otherwise, there's different steps that you would take to removing things. 
it's like this one here, this, re this resistor. One leg, and two leg, and out it comes. Uh, let's show you something else now. Let's get this out of the way, this flyback. <clears throat> right, what I normally do with these flybacks is, is I would heat up all the, the pins of some solder. So you're basically heating all the pins up. And uh, what it does, it just helps to remove it, I find. up all the pins. So you grow in hold of the, the fly back, you push down on it and heat individual pin up. And give a bit of a force to it as well. Not too much you're gonna pull the pins out the actual fly back because that's too devastating. The first one I did was actually uh, quite easy to do, it was quite easy to come out. It depends on, on how it's soldered in, sometimes it's soldered right up the legs to the top. And it can make it quite difficult to get some of these out. But uh, just keep heating each pin up as you're pulling it. And it should, shouldn't take too long. on the board with your shoulder just to pull out on that side. I normally do this in a vice in my shed which makes things a lot easier because then you've got two hands. Wind just right out now. Careful of the spatter as well when the board flings back. Last thing you want to do is get solder in the eye, and there you go. As quick as that. All the pins are all not undamaged. You just get your soldering iron and just get some of the remains of the solder off. And there you go. One fire back out. So, to remove one of these, choose the least pin side, so there's five pins on that side and about eight pins on that side. So, push down on it, like you would do with the flyback, and heat each individual pin up. I need a bit of solder on that one, does. If you can heat two pins up at once by putting the solder in on in between two pins and that makes things work quicker. Beg your pardon, this one's got five pins, not four. And just because it's on cover it's in an arse. Coming out, you know you want to. There you go. And then all you do is just get a little bit of solder on these pins because there's not very much. Or you can just get a Bunsen burner and heat the crap out the bottom of the board. <laughs> but it just, it's too smelly and it's 
do messy. I've got some really nice little 555 timer boards to show you in a bit, guys, that I got off eBay. It's taking a lot longer than normal. The other one came out quite easily. Bend it this way. There we go. There you go. Out. So, that's how I normally take stuff out. See, stuff does come out quite easily like this inductor here, which is a four pin one. Just a little bit of pressure down one side, just to force it out the hole when the solder's undone. And then out it comes. Little one here, four pins. And out it comes. So, this one here, like uh, something on a heat sink. It comes not. So, am I still recording? That better be. Yes, I'm still recording. Sorry, my battery's saying it's dying. So, that's how you get stuff out. Look at these little 5 5 timers on the Diddy. These are off eBay. Only a couple of pound each. Good enough for uh, running a gate driver on an RGBT of some sort. I mean that one's replaceable because it's got the uh, it's got the the bed for the uh, the five five timer, so it's got the socket for that one, so it's easy to be replaced if it blows. But these ones could just use for a uh, RGBT. So I thought to share them with you guys. Something like this. To get this removed, get a pair of long nose on it and just get these tabs off first which will stop the board from coming off. Normally I'd just snip these off but uh, to take these off the board normally put a pair of pliers underneath of it and just edge it up as you're heating the pins up and it will come off quite easily these ones do. Normally the ones with extra pins like here, these ones are a bit harder to do but these ones just come, off, just come straight off. So, <clears throat> thanks for watching guys, look after yourselves and be safe, and I'll speak again.